Welcome everyone. Thank you for being here in this practice. Let's start by letting the palms gently rest on your lap. Settle, arrive, land on your seat. A wall can be supportive if you need it to sit tall, perhaps just a prop underneath the sitting bones. And as you feel needed, wiggle, shift the weight until you find the very center at the bottom of the pelvic floor, grounding, rooting, expanding, giving you the opportunity to feel supported, held at ease. When we start the practice, there's different energies that are combined. So we have the downward energy, the rooting, the connection to earth, and we also have the upward energy from the earth, drawing the nutrients, the energy, the power up through the central axis of the body towards the skies. And inviting those two energies to cohabit, to coexist, to keep alertness, awareness and ease as well. So give yourself here a few moments to recognize, listen, any noises in your room that perhaps call your attention, maybe sounds coming from outside the room. And then slowly and gently invite that attention to move in. Softening the eyeballs, making space between your eyelids and the eyeballs gently receding towards the back of your skull. And that gentle movement to make space is combined with the eye gaze moving down towards the heart center. Let your breath be natural. No engineering, changing or fixing. Just stay watchful, observant of that flow. And notice how that breath is brushing your spine, is moving into your abdomen, is expanding perhaps into your pelvis, maybe further down into the legs. Notice the expansion, the space, and also the release as the cycle of inhalation and exhalation happen naturally. Then let's give ourselves just a short moment to recognize any physical sensations, any emotions, any thoughts, any perhaps worries or tension accumulated in your body, in your heart, in your mind. And as an intro for this practice, just give yourself the opportunity to recognize and acknowledge 
all of those emotions, thoughts, sensations, anything that arises in loving kindness, being very compassionate with yourself, and remembering your true self, the flame that it's lit and ignited within your heart, in your soul, is unaffected by the passing emotions, fears, physical sensations or pain. We find refuge in that flame. We let that space be our anchor, our place to regroup and reset, pause and feel whenever needed. Let's bring our palms together with the thumbs resting right in front of the heart center. Giving yourself a moment to set the intention that you choose for your practice. And as you visualize yourself being that intention, a reminder that carrying that intention with you through your practice will bring the results that you are perhaps wanting to feel to have by the end of this journey. We'll open with the OM sound one time if you choose to join, inhaling deeply through the nose. Big exhale through the mouth. Then breathing in again. Oh. Whenever ready, let your head connect to the hands and the heart, the three together. Releasing the palms down to your lap again, lifting the head and opening the eyes. Thank you again for being here. Welcome to practice. Get a belt with you ready because we are going to use it right away. And if not, it can be a scarf. If you have the opportunity to have a belt, please make a loop with it. I'll show you uh, with my belt what we're going to do. And we'll come to the mat, okay? So what I did was, uh, I'm, I'm really bad with inches, but I'm going to say maybe six inches <laughs> of a loop and you uh, want to have, uh, when we use it on, on our feet that I'm going to show you in a moment, you want to have that tail close by so you can adjust if needed, okay? So the first thing that I'm going to do today here is to lie down on the mat. I'm facing up towards the ceiling. I'm taking a moment here just to feel the sensations as I let my whole body, bones release and connect to earth. A little bit like when we come into Shavasana, just letting the bones release, feeling the shoulders, the back of the skull releasing down. Perhaps you feel more pounded through the hips, the leg bones, the feet. One more breath here, starting to invite that flow in your breath that feels almost like water flowing naturally, peacefully through the nose, in and out. Then from there, slowly we'll bend both knees and that loop that I made, I'm going to place it right on both my feet and I'm going to try and have my feet hip distance apart. With that loop there, if you want to make it bigger so you can hold your loop with your hands, which is what I'm going to do, please do it as wide as needed so you're not struggling to hold that bend, okay? So I'm going to keep both my feet hip distance apart and I'm going to send the belt as far back as I can towards my heels and we are going to try and create a lot of uh, activation through the center of the heels. 
So I want you to start pressing the belt through the center of the heels. And of course, if the hamstrings, they feel tight, or if you feel sensitivity in the lower back, you're going to keep your knees bent most of the time, okay? I'm going to go with the second option just to show you the action of the heels. My, the center of my heels are really pressing up towards the ceiling. And together with that, as I'm keeping my legs perpendicular to the floor, I'm trying to also activate the base of my big toes and my pinky toes. So what I'm trying to do is to create a triangle, triangular shape in my feet from the center of the heels to the base of the big toes and the pinky toes. So imagine that triangle there that we are creating. And those three points are really activated and are firmly press, pressing up. As we do that, we are also creating a lot of activation through the inner legs. So you may feel not only your hamstrings, but also the fronts of the thighs contracting more and from your groins all the way up to the inner heels, a little bit more activation too. Let's take a few breaths. Notice the expansion in your pelvis, letting also the lower abdomen expand as you inhale. And with the exhale, also the sacrum, the coccyx grounding a little more. Good. Then I'm going to modify this shape just a little bit. And for that, I will need to open my loop a little wider so I can send my feet a little wider and the measurement will be the width of your mat. So you want now to make your feet as wide as the mat. So I did my belt a little wider, not too much. So I'm checking more or less. And from there again, I have a little bit more space. So now I'm going to be activating more of the groins and inner legs. And again, I'm going to make an effort into pressing through the center of the heels and then the base of the big toes and the pinky toes. So as we are activating that triangular shape or that triangle in our feet, we are also on purpose by doing that, activating the inner arches in your feet much more than the usual perhaps. And with that, we are really getting into lots of organs within our bodies as we really leave that energy in the inner arches towards the pelvis and from there towards the heart. Two more breaths we'll take here. One more long steady breath flowing like water and then slowly bend the knees. Take that belt out to the side and put your feet down for a moment. And then extend the legs, just one full breath here to notice sensations, maybe tingling, maybe throbbing, maybe pulsing. Taking notes before we go into the next shape. Good. We're going to use this loop again and we're going to use the belt again, but this time you will need to roll to one side for a moment because I want you to add either a pillow or a block or maybe it's your coffee table if you have it close by or perhaps it's the side of your bed if you're very close to your bed. We are going to open the leg to the side and support it with the prop. So I'm going in this case to use my block and I'm going to show you the first side closest to the camera so you can see what we are doing and then we'll switch it around. So now I'm going to keep for me the left leg extended and I'm going to, again, put that belt at the very end of the right foot, so it's at the heel area. Maybe I will need to shorten my loop a little, check what uh, that feels for you. And the first thing that we are going to do here is to re-extend that right leg up towards the ceiling. Again, I'm trying to keep that belt close to the heel so I can really feel the center of that heel moving up towards the skies. Left leg extended, heavy on the mat, pushing through that heel as well. And we take a couple of breaths. Good. 
I want you to sing today in this triangular shape because we are going to use it a lot in our uh, postures. So the triangle is a little bit of the theme, okay? So first we start with the triangles in the feet. So I'm trying to do the same with the left foot that it's grounded and pushing away from me. And now keeping either the left hand onto the left hip or opening the left arm to the side, I'm going to bring that right leg towards the side. I don't want it to go all the way down and that's why we are going to use the block at any height or a, or a book or a pillow, or like I said, the bed, so you can have that support for the leg, okay? Once you get there, relax the shoulders. Again, start reactivating the center of that right heel if you're going with the right leg that, like me, and push through that heel and then after that, activate the base of the big toe and the pinky toes. And then release the back of your skull. Try to keep the left leg straight, pushing away from your pelvis towards the end of your mat. And take two breaths. Good. In these two breaths, what I would like you to try and do is to, this is a subtle movement, but I want you to try and bring the lower abdomen towards the left side of your body. So it's against or, or opposite to the leg that it's extended to the side. Okay, so I'm trying to bring like my belly and my organs from the right to the left. And then if you need to bend the knee, bend the knee, bring that leg back up and slowly take the belt out, release the leg, take a deep breath in. Exhale, let it all drop. Good. When you go to the second side, I'm moving because I don't have the space, I have the wall behind me. So I'm gonna show you that second side. If you have the space, just stay there. Bring the belt to the left heel, as close to the heel as you can. Again, I'm using that loop to help me hold the bell, and then I'm going to extend the right leg out to the top of the mat. From here, either arm out to the side for that right arm or hand onto your hip. We start as we push through that heel, opening the leg towards the side. Maybe you will need to adjust that prop so you have the support of the leg with the block, pillow, or anything like that. And then once you get there, reconnect with that triangle in your foot. So press through the center of the heel, the base of the big toe, and the base of the pinky toe. Even if they don't feel like you can really isolate those movements, try and go with your mind there and recreate that triangular shape and push through those three points. Good. Again, before we let go of this side, we are trying to move now the organs, the belly or the lower abdomen from the left side of your body over to the right. Breathing with a water-like flow through the nose. Calm, steady, even through the rocks. Good, and then again, if you need to bend the knee, bend the knee, or extend the leg, comes back up, bend the knee towards your chest, extend that leg, and let them rest for one full breath. Good, for the next one, we'll go back to uh, taking both feet into that loop one more time before we switch into something else. This time again, I'm going to make that loop a little uh, smaller so I can have my legs hip distance apart. And watch this one, it's a little different. So again, I'm going to push through my heels. My legs are perpendicular to the floor. And what I'm going to do this time is to hold the very end of my belt. So now I'm drawing a different triangle. Again, we play with triangles my legs, the belt, and I'm going to pull all the way so I get my arms overhead as far as I can go. Don't worry if they don't go totally all the way to the floor, but you're going to try and pull that belt and extend your inner arms as much as you can. Now, as I'm doing this, after I get the shape, 
I really want to, again, go into the triangles of my feet. So I'm going to push through the center of the heels, the base of my big toes and pinkies, and try and draw those triangles to activate the inner legs, the organs, and lengthen through the side body all the way overhead. Three breaths. Last one, steady, long breath. Good, and then slowly bend the knees. Take the belt out to the side. Take the belt also, let it uh, stay on the side and bend your knees onto your chest for a moment. And now we are going to put the soles of the feet together and let the knees drop to the sides. We call it Supta Bada Konasana. We are going to modify it a little bit. What I want us to do here is to try and activate the center of the heels into one another. So pre press firmly with the center of the heels into each other. And then from there, if possible, you are going to send your arms overhead, lace your fingers, turn the palms so they are pointing towards the back of your room or the wall that you have behind you, and extend through the palms, the wrists, and try to, again, create an activation of your inner and outer arms. So they are really lengthening and stretching and going far up over your head. If you lost the pressure of the heels into one another, see if you can take that again. Breathing in. Exhale. One more full breath. Good, and then slowly release the arms. Bring your knees back towards one another. Nice, roll over to one side, and then we press up so we can come onto our knees. Okay, from here, <laughs> yeah, from here we're going to take our first downward facing dog, but before we take it, what I want to tell you is that I want us to set the hands in a way that you create a small triangle between your thumb and your index fingers. So I'm placing my palms down, and instead of having them straight forward, I'm going to just uh, pivot them a little bit out so I can see more or less a triangular shape between the creases of my, uh, the connection between my index and thumbs, and from there, press a little bit more heavily into the mat, okay? After I have that, I'm going to tuck the toes, and I'm going to slowly start lifting through the sitting bones. And instead of extending my legs right away, I want you to observe your palms again, ground through the base of the thumbs and the index finger all the way to the pinkies. And then from there, we're going to try and create again a triangle. So I'm going to try and send my coccyx, my sacrum, all the way up towards the ceiling. I keep my knees bent for this one first. And as I push and I extend through the side body, I let the neck relax and I let the contents of my brain drop. Let them release down. Good, once you're there, draw the lower abdomen in and see if you can lift that pelvic floor up towards your ribs and slowly start lengthening through the heels towards the back of your mat and see if you can, so we get there, and then I want you to again draw the abdomen in, re-bend the knees, again set that sacrum as far up as you can, feel the, even the sitting bones going up towards the skies, and then again re-extend through the legs, of course, if your hamstrings feel tight, you keep your knees bent. If you're okay here, again, drop the neck. Let the contents of your skull come down, release. One more breath here. 
toning the legs, drawing the energy up from the inner arches. So can you notice if the center of your heels are active? If the base of your big uh, toes and, and pinkies are active? And then from there, gaze forward, bend the knees, take a step or walk to the top of your mat. Good. And from here, we inhale, halfway lengthening the spine, shoulders back, draw the belly up. Exhaling, we fold. Good, draw again that triangular shape in your feet. Press through the center of the heels, base of the big toe and pinkies. And from there, hands to the hips, lengthen the spine, and we come all the way up. Good. Take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Good, I'm not turning because we're going to move from here. So we'll take a few salutations to again, draw the energy and move it in the body. From here, we're going to inhale, arms up, overhead. Keep those triang triangles in your feet working. Lift the energy through the inner arches. Exhaling, we fall, bending the knees if needed. Inhaling, lengthening halfway. Then plant your hands, walk back. We take the plank pose. Push through the base of the thumbs and the index fingers. Push through the heels, lift the inner thighs up. Good, then you can use your knees first to come down all the way towards your mat. From there, we are going to open the hands a little wider, fingertips touching down. Roll the shoulders back, draw the navel in, inhaling, cobra pose. Exhaling, we release. Good, hands under the shoulders, tuck your toes. And from here, check your hands, we go back up, downward facing dog. Deep breath in and exhale. Good, again, press through the center of your heels, draw the inner arches up, press the base of your uh, big toes and pinkies down. Good, bend your knees, gaze forward, step, hop, or jump to the top. Inhaling halfway. Exhaling, we fold over the legs. Press through the center of the heels, lift the inner arches, come all the way up. Hands to the heart, and we release. Good, second time, let's go. Inhaling, arms up. Exhaling, we fold, Uttanasana. Inhaling, halfway, we lengthen. Shoulders back, heart forward. Place your hands down, walk back again, plank pose. Draw the navel up, hip bones towards one another, lengthen through the crown of the head. We come down. Again, same thing as before, hands out. Roll the shoulders back, press through the tops of the feet. Draw the navel up to the sternum, sternum up to the skies. Exhale, release. Hands under the shoulders, tuck your toes. Up we go to Adho Mukha Svanasana, down dog. Good, feel your base. The triangular shape in the base of the thumbs and index fingers, and the center of the heels, base of pinky and big toes. Bend the knees, gaze forward, step, hop, or jump to the top. Inhaling to Arda, the half lift. Exhaling, we fold. Press through that triangular shape, come all the way up. And back to center, we release. Good, we have one last to go. Inhaling, arms up. Exhaling, Uttanasana. Inhaling, Ardha, halfway. Draw the inner arches up. Exhale, plant the hands, walk back to plank. Draw everything in, push through the inner heels. Coming down when you're ready. Same as before, hands out. Roll the shoulders, draw the shoulder blades down, lift through the sternum. 
Exhale. Hands under the shoulders, stack your toes, and up we go, down dog. Let's take a moment here before we switch into a different route, a different thing. And again, bring awareness to the center of the heels, base of the pinkies and big toes. Draw the energy up through the inner arches and feel that energy move up through the inner shins, inner knees, all the way to the base of your pelvis. Draw the lower ribs down and relax the neck and the head. Push through your hands to activate the arms, opening the chest, draw the shoulder blades gently back, then gaze forward, bend the knees, walk, step or jump to the top, inhaling halfway, exhaling we fold, Use your triangular shape in your feet to push and come up. And we release, coming to Namaste Shape Center. We release into Tadasana. Good, excellent. Shake it a little. And we go from here into the use of props again. So now we are going to widen the legs for the forward fold posture. But this one, because we want to keep working in the triangle and those things that I'm working today, I want you to be able to support your head, the skull. So maybe it's two blocks, maybe it's a pillow, maybe it's a box and a blanket on top, okay? For each of us, it's different. So have a few things and then you know, you'll see how many do you need, okay? So I'm going to place my feet parallel to each other with my toes slightly in, and before I'm coming down, put your hands on your hips when you get there. I want you to try and activate the outer edges of your feet and see if in this shape it's possible to lift your toes a little just for fun. See if you can lift them and spread them a little and keep that for a moment so you'll feel that activation in the inner arches lifting up away from the floor. And with that, I want you to try and sense if you can also feel the center of your heels a little more grounded. So we are going to try and keep that as much as possible, even play with the idea of keeping the toes a little bit off the mat, okay? Good, from here, roll the shoulders back and down, opening through the chest, take a breath where you are. Good, and then we are going to send the arms up and overhead extending through the sides first, lengthen, let's reconnect with the base, so lift through the inner arches, make the center of your heels grounded, the base of the big toes which tend to become light, push them down, and from there we lengthen, torso forward, and we'll come towards touching. Once you get there, then you're going to set whichever amount of props you need, to support the skull and notice that the skull should be comfortably sitting there it's not compressing the neck or it's not that you are like trying to extend the neck a lot so you can get to the prop so make the height that it's really comfortable and from there we are going to extend the arms like if we are taking downward facing dog so I want you to send your arms in front of you let the head relax and again, imagine you can let the contents of your brain just be released onto your prop. Take a few breaths here. And again, as you breathe for a few cycles, get those triangles active through your feet, okay? So I'm gonna come so I can check a little. Good, beautiful. So try and see if you can really ground through the center of your heels. And with that action, connect into the front thighs of your legs and send them a little bit towards the back of your legs. Of course, if your thighs or hamstrings, they feel tight, then you are not going to push those uh, quads so much into your bones. You're going to bend a little bit the knees and let them be a little bit more... Um, 
more uh, flowy, right? So less uh, contraction, okay? A few more breaths. Beautiful. Extend through the arms, releasing there for the last breath. And then walking the hands closer to your feet, bringing the hands to the hips. Again, use the center of your heels, the base of pinky and big toes to push and lengthen the spine to come all the way up to standing. Beautiful, stay there for a moment and gently move heels and toes towards one another so you can close that shape, standing shape a little, okay? Beautiful, super. Now from here, before we move into the next uh, posture, we're going to transition with one down dog. And this down dog will be uh, with a prop. <laughs> so if you have a book or a box or a block, you're going to use it. I'm going to come a little closer so you can see. I'm going to put it like this, length, in between my thighs, and I'm sending it as far up as I can, okay? So I'm trying to be able to really squeeze that block from there. I'm walking back to my mat, <laughs> and then from here, good luck, we need to get into the down dog. So I'm going to hug very high up into that block, and then slowly, if you can, bend your knees, bring your hands, check again if you can do those triangles with the base of the thumb and index fingers, and then you walk yourself to find the shape and the distance that feels appropriate here. Push through the hands, extend again through the arms, relax the skull. Good. And let's play again with that hugging action into the block. Draw the navel up, draw the pelvic floor up and the ribs down. And then again, see if you can activate the center of your heels down onto the floor, lifting the inner arches and perhaps even lifting your toes a little bit. Breathing in and out. One more breath. Let that neck be soft and heavy. Good, then slowly gaze forward, bring your knees down, touch down onto the hands and knees position and take the block out. Send it for a moment to the side. Good, we come up. And now we are going into standing again, okay? Now for this one, it's a traditional triangle pose that we are going to take, but I'm going to tell you some things about it as we get to the, to, into the shape. Take a block for support, and we'll go there. <laughs> My mat likes to travel because I'm on carpet. Okay, good, so I'm going to start with both feet wide. Good, and I'm going to mirror you guys. So you're going to open your left foot first towards the top of your mat, left foot, and the block will be behind that shin in case you need it for support. Now I'm going to line up the front heel with the back arch, and the first thing that I'm going to be doing is to press through the center of the heels down. Now with my back foot, what I'm going to try and do is to really activate the outer edge of that foot so I, I can create that lift in the inner arch, like what we've been doing all along, okay? So I'm going to press into that outer edge. I'm going to try and still keep the connection of the big toe mount pressing into the floor. And in the front, the front heel and the big toe mount, again, sorry, center of the heel and big toe mount, they are going to be super active. Then we'll extend the arms out. And I want you to imagine as we come to the triangle, there's someone putting a belt around your hips and pulling it towards their right side. So that's the action that I want you to create as you firm the hips in. Imagine someone pulling from the left side and you're, go uh, sorry, the right side, and you're going with your hips towards that right side, lengthening, 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 lengthening until you get either to your shin or your block or whatever it is that it's your support and we send the right arm up. Beautiful, once we get there, we reconnect with the triangles in our feet, right? This is a triangle pose. So we are going to start at the feet. 
Press again through the center of the heels, lift through the inner arches, and in this shape, it's hard to keep the connection of the big toe mount. So see if you can go there actively, and from that action, feel the lift in the inner arches. That gives a lot of lift and opening in the whole shape. And then from there, I'm going to try and keep that action of the hips moving towards the right side as I bring the side ribs down towards that right side as well. Head can uh, face up or down if your neck is uncomfortable. Try and bring the left glute into your body, opening the chest, and now we'll try and spin the belly up, up, up towards the skies. One more breath. Push through the heels and the base of the big toes to lift and come up. And exhale and release. <laughs> nice. Let's turn that left foot in and open the right foot out to the side. Good. Now we'll take the block to the other side in case you need it. Heel to arch action again. Shape. Good. And now I'm going to create the connection into the outer edge of the back foot. Press into the center of that heel, lifting the energy through the inner arch. Front foot, heel, big toe. Activate and lift from there. Extend arms to the sides. Good. And now imagine the belt that someone put is pulling towards that left side. So I'm going to lift the side body, relax the shoulders, and slowly start letting my hips go to the opposite side. Like if someone is pulling, 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 pulling. And then I'm taking that right hand down to the shin, the ankle or the block, wherever it is that it lands for you. The opposite arm is going up towards the skies. Once I get there, I reconnect with my base, the triangle of the feet. And then I'm going to try on that upper line, the ribs, I'm going to try and send them down towards my hip. If I let them flare out, I don't know if you can see, but it makes my other side shorter. So I'm trying to lengthen that side into the hips, to the right side, left side, so I can create more opening in the torso. And then I'm going to spin the belly and the chest up to the skies, shoulders back. Take a few breaths. Good. Then we press through the feet to come up. Exhale and release. Take that left foot in, heel toe the feet towards each other. Beautiful, and shake it a lot. Nice. I'm transitioning with different postures today in between the things. It's not a flow class, it's more like alignment. And now I'm going to use my blocks again. Perhaps for this one, I will need more than one or more support than before. Because in this one, I want us to have the feet hip distance apart or a tiny bit wider. Okay, so it's just a little bit wider than the hips. And then I'm going to take a fold again. I'm going to do it sideways so you can see what I'm trying to do here. I'm going to, I don't know if I will need one or two blocks. So for now, let's say I'm going to keep one tall block because we're going to fold. So drawing the lower abdomen in, bending the knees if you need at any point and you keep them bent as much as you need. I'm going to fold and try and find again that support of the prop that you have. For some of us, on, and sometimes depending on the time of day, maybe you need one and a half, <laughs> maybe you need two, maybe you need uh, a Lego tower <laughs> of, of books or something like that, okay? So find what's appropriate for you. And then what we are going to try and do here, and now I'm going to change so you can see the other part, is that we want to create a triangle. So I'm dropping my head and letting it be supported, and then I'm going to open my arms to the sides and my fingertips are touching the floor, okay? So in order for this to happen, you have to make sure that you have the support under the skull, okay? It can be like I said, like this, or adding more. And then once we get there, I want you to try and draw the lower abdomen in, press through the center of your heels, and feel the sensation of your sacrum and the back of your pelvis as leveled as you can to create that sensation of the triangle again, okay? 
So breathing in and out here. And like I said, excellent what I'm saying. If you need to keep your knees bent for spinal issues, please do, okay? So breathe a few times, let the neck soften, the skull drop, and try to find that flow in your breath. For me, it's a little tougher because I'm talking and moving at the same time and trying to make sure that everything is okay, but try to really find this water-like flow. Just a couple more breaths. Good. After that last breathing cycle, you'll bring the hands a little closer towards your props, your support. Again, use the power of the feet to bring your hands into your hips, lengthen, draw the belly up, and come all the way to standing and release the arms. Beautiful. Okay, let's heel toe the feet again towards one another. And this time for the next shape, we will use two blocks or two supports, okay? So in this one, what I'm going to do is to, I'm going this way and I'm going to use the same leg that I'm saying, okay? So right foot goes in front, left foot goes behind, it looks like the shape that we do when we take a warrior one, but I'm not going to bend my front knee. And by that, what I want you to know is that the back foot needs to be rounded, okay? Pressing onto the floor so we can use that triangle shape. My blocks are going to be frame, framing my front foot in case I need to use them there, okay? First thing that we're going to do here is to bring the hands onto the hips. And you're going to make sure that as you're standing, you don't feel like you're falling. If you feel like you're falling, you may need to widen the stance more. So make the right and the left foot a little further away from each other, okay? Good. Now I want you to try and press the center of the back heel down onto the floor and the outer edge of that foot, pressing also to create that lift in the inner arch, okay? In the front foot, I'm going to use the center of the heel down to the earth, big toe mount and pinky down onto the floor to keep that action of grounding and lifting the energy up. From here, I'm going to send the arms up, draw the abdomen up, extend through the arms, keep the chest wide, draw the sacrum down to the earth and firm the hips towards one another. You'll feel more action in the legs as well. We keep that and we slowly, as we keep the, uh, the hips firming in, we lengthen the torso, we bring the, the sacrum long and we draw the navel up until we come with the hands down into your support. If you don't need a lot, you can make them flat. If you don't need at all, don't use them. If you do, put them under your shoulders so it helps you with the height right on the shape. Good, now from here, first I'm going to stay with the trunk parallel to the floor. I'm going to draw the right hip back towards the back of the mat. And then I'm going to notice what's happening in the back foot. Is it dropping in? Can I again create that triangle in the sole of my foot? So I push through the center of the heel, pinky mount and big mount uh, of the toe. So I can lift there, keep sending the right hip back, and then lengthen again through the spine. And from there, if it's available today, we let the torso fold over the front leg. Good. As you stay in the shape for a few breaths, try to keep drawing the right hip back, Lower abdomen lifts, lengthening the front of the spine over the leg and pushing into the back heel so as to lift through the inner arches. One more breath. Good. Then slowly return to the tabletop. Bring your hands to the hips. You will need to use that power in your feet so you can come all the way up without falling. Nice, and then bring the back foot forward. Take a breath in, breath out. 
Nice, and we switch. I'm going to send my right foot back, turn in like a warrior one, and I have my left foot forward. I keep a little bit of space in between my legs so I feel more stable, and then I put the blocks there for support or balance, okay? Good, now with the hands to the hips, when you're there, beautiful, push into the center of the back heel and activate the the outer uh, line of your foot, okay? Good, from there I'm trying to really lift through the inner arch and spread the toes, they tend to come all together. And then front foot, center of the heel, base of the big toe and pinky. See if you can find that connection between those three points. Draw the lower abdomen in and up, send the arms up towards the skies, lengthen through the sides, Exhale, firm the hips into one another and lengthen the trunk towards the tabletop. Bring the hands down to the support. Good, once you're there, we reset the awareness into the feet. Lift through the inner arches, push through the center of the heel, create like a tent-like form or shape in your arches and feel that action. It's going to really activate the inner legs a lot. Good, keep firming the outer hips in, lengthen the spine, and then if possible or available, you fold the trunk over the front leg. If you need to lift those blocks and make them taller so you can do that, please do. We are trying to keep the length in the front of the spine with minimal arching if you can. That's why if you need tall blocks or tall support, put it tall so it helps you, okay? Now from here, relax the neck, the head, keep sending the left hip up and back, draw the lower abdomen in, and reconnect with the triangular base. One more breath here. Then we return to the tabletop, firm through the feet, firm through the hips, bring the hands to the hips, and we push the floor to come up. Nice, bring the back foot forward. Take a deep breath in, and a big breath out. Nice, okay. We are going to repeat this with some changes. <laughs> so now I'm going to again, have my right foot in front, have my left foot behind, same idea as before. My left foot is turned in, it looks like I'm going to do the warrior one, but I'm not. <laughs> this time we're going to do a twisted triangle, okay? So, front foot, same thing as before, I'm uh, grounding through the triangular base. I'm going to put, again, both my blocks framing the front foot, you may want to use the block that is on your left or the block that is on your right. You are going to decide which one it will be for the triangular, uh, the revolve triangle. And again, we push through the heels, we lift everything from the arches, bring your hands onto your hips, draw the spine up, relaxing the shoulders down first. Inhaling here, and exhale. For this first version, we are going to keep the right hand onto the hip, and we are going to send the left arm up. Good, lengthen that side, draw the abdomen up, push into that back heel, front big toe, and start lengthening the trunk. Go halfway, and then firm the right hip back, and keep lengthening the spine, and this is where you're going to choose, if that left hand goes inside your right foot, or if it's able to come to the outside of that foot, okay? I'm going to show it will be either here or the other side. Right hand stays in the right hip, and keep pushing that right hip back with your hand, and now find the triangles in your feet again. Push through the center of the heels, lift through the inner arches, lengthen the abdomen, and now draw the left side of your belly up towards the ceiling and try and stay there in the revolve triangle. If this is too much, you bring the hand onto the inside of the foot, okay? Good, from here, 
keep sending the right hip back, keep bringing the lower abdomen up to the skies. Option to send the right arm up or not. <laughs> Bring the chest up, 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 up. Keep pressing through the heels, the base of your toes. Good, then slowly bring that right hand to the hip, left hand back to the left, bend the front knee if you need, and push up to standing. Ah, nice. Bring the left foot forward, take a deep breath. Good, and we'll switch on to the second side. Left foot and last one. Left foot in front, right foot behind. Again, I'm finding my marker there in my mat, so the foot looks like the warrior one. And I'm going to put each block to frame the front foot. I'm just doing a regular height, right? I'm doing the medium height, but of course you put the height that it's needed for you. Good, we go from there up, find again the base, draw the energy through the inner arches, hands onto the hips, firm the hips in, and mainly try to use your left hand to send that left hip a little bit back. Don't force it to, to an extreme. It's just a little bit to create more opening there. Notice if the back thigh, the back leg, if it starts to drop. See if you can press into the center of that back heel to lift that inner arch. Good. Now I'm going to keep the left hand onto the left hip. Inhale the right arm up. Draw the shoulders gently down. Lengthen that right side, inhale here. Don't lose the power in your legs and your feet. And we come towards the tabletop. Good, send that left hip back, pushing to the left big toe mount. Don't let it lift, it will lift. Try to push it down and then lengthen, 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 lengthen. Bring that right hand under the right shoulder or you go a little further to the left side of the foot if you can. Okay, lengthen there again, send the left hip back. Notice if you're collapsing in the back foot, see if you can push it back and down. Again, I'm lengthening through the front of the spine and then slowly starting to find that twist towards the left. My belly and my chest, they are trying to come towards the left side and up towards the ceiling. I know it's intense, push through the heels. Don't lose the base of your left toe. And then if you want, you add the left arm. It's not necessary if it's not there for you today, okay? This is intense. Push through the heels, open up, open up, open up. Then bring that left hand back to the hip, return and push to come back. Bring the back foot forward. Shake a little bit through the legs. Nice, and release here. Okay, take a deep breath in, in Tadasana. Actually, I want us to take Tadasana with the feet hip distance apart, releasing your arms. You can close your eyes if you want. And after all of this work, notice your base again. Feel where are you naturally grounding in your feet and notice the rest of the body from the base up. Recovering the breath, noticing sensations, any aches or sensitivity or just the sensation of the work in the body, right? Tingling, throbbing, pulsing. Good, one more breath. Beautiful, super. From here, we are going to slowly come to a seat. I'm shortening all the plans so we can get some other stuff in. So if you want to put a blanket under your sitting bones uh, for extra support, I highly recommend it, I really like it. Uh, just for me to make it a little faster so I get into the shape I want, but you can put a folded blanket under the ceiling bones, and then we are going to widen the legs. We call it Upavishta Konasana, and I really want to have, again, props so we can fold and be supported under the skull with anything that you have, pillows, blankets, blocks. 
Good. So from here, first, because again, we are playing with the triangular shape, right? As we see it, we can imagine if I had a belt from heel to heel, I would be creating another triangle. So in this triangle, what I want us to do is to try and ground the outer thighs towards the floor. We tend to sometimes let the feet drop in or the knees drop in. And if we activate that backside more down towards the floor, we are going to also be grounding through the sitting bones a lot. So we are going to try and keep that action. You can put your hands behind you for a moment and do that and see if you can bring that sensation in your body. A little bit of that tucking in from the outer thighs down towards the floor. Take a deep breath in. And out. And one more. Good. And then slowly we'll add extra support and we may not know how much we will need so you can put a few and as you slowly start walking yourself into the fold i'm going to try and keep the action of the outer or back thighs moving down into the floor okay it doesn't matter you know me but it doesn't matter how far you're going just find a place where you can easily rest your head. It might be if you have a bolster tall and you're just staying here and it's very tall, it's all good, okay? From there, I'm just going to release and release the arms and stay there with that fold for a few breaths. I'll tell you when we get out of it. So we'll try and stay for a whole minute here, trying to ground the sitting bones, finding that opening through the under legs, outer thighs dropping, relaxing the skin in the face, dropping the jawline, easing through your ears, letting the tongue come down, rest it onto the bottom palate and breathing in a gentle, fluid flow. Keep pushing through your outer heels. Good. Last full breath. And then slowly walk yourself back up. Take the support out to the side. And with your hands, you can invite the knees gently to bend and come towards one another. Good, okay. Now from here, we are going to add something else. <laughs> I'm going to come onto the mat again. And this time I'm going to create a different triangle. This time I'm going to set my forearms down. I'm going to lace my fingers. Some of us, some people like to just have the palms together. Sometimes it's more like lacing the fingers. So you choose the one that feels comfortable for you. And we are going to create an activation through the inner elbows down to the floor and through the base of your forearms, okay? So I'm going to really push the arm and create a triangular shape again from the base of the wrists all the way to the, the inner elbows. And as I'm pushing there, I'm going to move my knees a few inches behind the hips. You didn't see this coming, but it's coming. And we are going to tuck the toes and again, create that down dog with this triangular shape. This time, adding a little bit more of that lift and walking the feet perhaps a little bit in. Again, trying to, even if the heels are not touching, I'm trying to ground through the center of the heels and the base of the toes, big toe and pinky mainly, and then push the floor away with the forearms, with the base of your wrist, with the inner elbows, 
and let the head relax and the neck be long, okay? Let's take a few breaths, draw the navel in, ribs down towards your hips, firm the hips into the midline, and breathe. Fluid breath. One more, long and steady. And then slowly bring the knees down, untuck your toes, widen the knees a little bit more than the hips so you can settle the sitting bones back. And then from there we come to the child's pose. I'll tell you again when we end this rest, so take a few breaths. Reset the breath. It may be a little bit agitated. That's a really good way to start practicing the inversion that goes into the um, headstand that we call. And we are activating the lungs, the upper back, working the strength in the arms and the whole upper body. And we create the same benefits, almost the same benefits as going upside down. A few more breaths. Good. Last breath here. And then slowly, after that cycle, bring yourself back up to a seat and make sure that you have again something like a, a block so you can use it for support. This time I'm going to come onto my back and we will all use the block as a support. We are going to go as high as it's uh, for you available today, coming onto your back. And because we are working with the triangles today and our last bone at the end of the spine is the coccyx that it's a triangular shape, I want you to try to put the block instead of sideways like this, the other way, okay? So if it's completely tall, the tallest height, then I'm using that short line to set my sacrum there. If you're in the medium, you're going to go this way. If you're in the flat, you use it this way. I hope you can see it, okay? So I'm gonna go into the tall. I'm going to press through the feet, spreading the toes, push through the heels, lift the pelvis, so you can put that line right under the sacrum. So it's at the very end of your spine. We are creating a back bend here. And then I'm going to walk my shoulders towards my feet and tuck my shoulder blades towards one another, opening the chest. If you need to widen your feet a little bit more, you can do that. And you can also catch the sides of your mat and push the sides of your mat so you create a little bit more opening through the chest, okay? Then we're going to let the back of the skull rest into the floor. And I want you to try and really let the sacrum settle onto that support that you have. And as you let it settle, we invite the pelvis to soften and move deeper down into that support. We we'll stay here for another more or less a minute and then I'll tell you when we get out. A few more cycles. One last. Good. And then pushing through your feet again, find that triangle to support you. Lift the pelvis, remove that support, and very slowly take it down to the mat. Good. From here, what we are going to add after you take a breath 
is bringing your feet towards one another, like the Bada Konasana shape with the soles touching each other. But instead of letting the legs drop down, I'm going to bring my feet into my hands so I can hold them there, feet together, knees wide like the Bada Konasana shape, and just pull the feet towards you and let the feet push into your hands. This will widen the lumbar spine and give space again into the sacrum after the back bend. Take a few breaths. Breathe into the back of the pelvis. Let the kidneys expand for one more breath. Good, then slowly bring both knees towards each other. Rock from side to side. Nice, and then from here, we'll extend the legs and come towards Shavasana. If you feel the need to add, it can be very beneficial if you have a bolster or a pillow or two pillows to put under your thighs or under the knees. It can feel really good to release the lower back and the rest of your body. And if you feel like you are ready and you have all the things that you need to come into the rest, please do. I'll let you know when we are done with the rest. And the invitation in Shavasana pose is to come to rest. Shavasana is understood in our yoga practice and in our yoga system as the opportunity to surrender. It is a posture that represents death. And as part of life, after giving our all into our practice, into our lives, we get the opportunity to gracefully release the body, letting go in the mind, and coming to the eternal self. We surrender gracefully with acceptance and ease.